It's the final day of Invent This tomorrow. It is all fun and games and science today in studio because we have our friend Michael Flynn here. He is an inventor who creates these wonderful contraptions in order to communicate science. Now, yes. Dan is pedaling. Yes, I was pedaling and I was making that thing float. Now, it's important to note that what I'm pedaling here is not mechanically connected to this. I'm creating electricity here. How does it work exactly? So uh, you're driving a generator and the electricity comes out the wire uh -huh. and goes to a fan. Uh, so you're powering a fan and the air goes into this I'm shooting out through here. Okay, so I'm gonna fire this thing up and then you Give guys do some go. science. Mm -hmm. So this is the Bernoulli principle in action. Exactly, so it's stable there. Um, Bernoulli principle explains a lot of things like uh, perfume atomizer and carburetors and airplane flights. That's right, and almost just when you stick your hand outside of the car window, how your arm will stay up. Now, of course, we've seen that like you can do bubbles, you can do balloons, but what else could Dan theoretically power here? With well, so I, I, uh, when I show this off at festivals, I like to run uh, music, so we have a little dance party. And also, uh, you can power light bulbs. So you can compare incandescent lights to LED lights. And, and what would the difference there be? Well, incandescent lights are really inefficient. They have to get hot before they make any light. So it takes a huge amount of effort, and uh, kids feel it. I think it's a wonderful experience. It'll oh. keep them from leaving the lights on. Right. I wonder what that's like to feel it. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So how much electricity do you think Dan was just putting out there? He was kicking at least 50 watts. Not nice. bad, my friend. Felt more like a kilowatt. Um, uh, All right. Michael's going to be here for a little longer in the show today with yeah. more demos. I just hope they're easier to do. All right. Michael Flynn is back, and he's reinvented the wheel. What is this fancy dancy thing? This is a giant phonograph, and it's cooperative. I need you guys to spin it a little faster and I'm gonna scrape it with a business card, and it's got a sound wave etched into this metal edge. Wow, so this is almost like a vinyl record. Except it's not fragile, and it's not microscopic. You can see and feel this. Okay. It's designed to help kids understand that sound is a physical thing. Okay. So this has my voice. It says, love is all you need. Let's hear. Love is all you need. Whoa! Wow! Love is all you need. Oh, oh my real gosh. Fast. Love is all you need. <laughs> business card okay, vinyl. Okay, wait, wait, let's that stop this thing. Really How, where is it? It's, it? it's etched here on this inner groove. So I uh, sang into a microphone and the computer then showed me that sound wave and then computer controlled cutting tools can carve any shape into metal. So, so full scale analog then. Exactly. Something that the kids these days aren't particularly used to with They're the MP3s. You know, they think this is witchcraft. I've got another track out here. And this one has a funky bass line. Can okay. Spin it, right. uh, about half that speed. Is All right. Right about there. Boom, buck boom Wow. This is fantastic. I have a prediction. I think the whole downloading music thing is going to be going the way of the past, and everybody's going to have one <laughs> of these in their living room. Welcome back. We're here with Michael Flynn again, and today we're going to be talking about, you know, the magical properties of water. And one of the things I love about science, of course, is it takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. So talk to us about what you're doing here. You're using a hand crank. That's right. There's a, another generator connected here. This is called the electrolysis detonator. Okay. So by cranking, uh, put electricity into water and you can separate H2O into H's and O. And the uh, bubbles go up. They collect in a chamber, and uh, the underwater chamber has hydrogen and oxygen in there. And uh, when you burn hydrogen with oxygen, the smoke, the resultant molecule is H2O. Wow, okay, well, so first of all, talk to me. It looks like incense is burning here, but one stick has more smoke kind of coming out of it than the other, so. Exactly, can you guess which one is H2 and which one is O? Well, I would guess because there's double the power here. This is the hydrogen and the oxygen is the less smaller bubble. Exactly, but we're collecting them together in the perfect mix into a single underwater chamber. Okay, now what's gonna happen next? Okay, so I've got an ignition button here. And kids always look at their finger. Don't look at your finger. Look up here. Here okay. we go. One, what? Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! Okay. So that's for real. That's an underwater explosion. It's it's not fake, but it's tiny, so it's safe. This is for science museums, and. Uh, it was hard to get across the border with an electrolysis detonator. I'm sure. So basically what we did was we separated out the hydrogen and the oxygen, and then we kind of brought them back together again at the top. It's a very short story. The water is uh, back in the tank now. Incredible. A beautiful fountain, a beautiful design. Thank you so much.